Here is a very interesting problem. Question 10. A batter hits a baseball straight up in the air. The height of the baseball in meters above the ground is given by h of t equals to minus 4.9 t square plus 23 t plus 2 where t is the number of seconds after the ball was hit. What is the speed of the ball 0.5 seconds after it reaches its maximum height? It's an application problem and note what is the speed of the ball 0.5 seconds after it reaches its maximum height? Okay, make a note of this sentence and then try to solve the question. This is unit 2 application problem. Okay, once you solve your question, then you look into my solution. Right now, here is my solution. Now, a batter hits a baseball straight up in the air. The height of the baseball in meters above the ground is given by h of t equals to minus 4.9 t square plus 23t plus 2, where t is the number of seconds after the ball was hit. What is the speed of the ball 0.5 seconds after it reaches its maximum height? It is important to read your problem twice. That's the first step. Second, make a note. What is the speed of the ball 0.5 seconds after it reaches its maximum height? So that means first you have to find the time when it reaches the maximum height and then you have to find the speed 0.5 seconds after that time. So this is the real problem. Okay. Now how will you find the time when it reaches the maximum height? So my suggestion is that we can adopt the general method of a difference quotient and find the time or ra rather get an equation in general for rate of change, the instantaneous rate of change, right? And then from there we'll find the time. So let us say that instantaneous rate of change, I want to use this symbol for instantaneous rate of change. As you know, is equals to f of t plus h minus f of t over h in general right because here we really don't know when will the ball reach its maximum height so we are solving a general equation right now t plus h means that you'll plug in replace t with t plus h in your given equation and so we get minus 4.9 t plus h whole square plus 23 t plus h plus 2 so this is f of t plus h right minus f of t which is minus 4.9 t square plus 23 t plus 2 right all this divided by h and what is h h is a point which is very very small so we say h is very very small as compared to 1 okay very small let's say point zero zero one types okay now let's expand this so when we expand it we get minus 4.9 we get t square plus 2th plus h square plus 23t plus 23h plus 2, correct? Minus, minus 4.9 t square plus 23t plus 2 over h. Is that okay? Now you will notice, so this is in general for all these difference question questions which we will do, that three, these three terms will get cancelled out for sure. If not, then something wrong has happened, okay? minus 4.9 times t squared you see minus 4.9 t squared this we have to take away and here we have minus 4.9 I'm saying when you expand it right you can 
straight away cancel it. 23t, 23t, 23t. 2, 2. So always look for all the terms here, they all should cancel. If they are not, then that means something is wrong. And then second thing which you have to note at the stage is all the remaining terms will have one H in them. Do you see that H? So we can factor out this H now. Do you understand? And cancel that H with this H. So that is always our next step. So we'll factor out this H and then write rest of the terms. So we'll have H here and then this H I'm taking away from here. And within brackets we are left with minus 4.9 and I am multiplying this with 2th and I have already taken out h outside so I have got 2t here right this term is out so we have got plus 23 right because h we have factored out so plus 23 okay one term is here h square so h we factored out so we have we have here minus 4.9 h square yeah and then we have so h we factor out so we have only h here and then we have plus 23 right so these are the terms left now we can cancel h and h and so we are left with minus 9.8 t and minus 4.9 h plus 23 Okay. Now, since h is very small, we can assume it is 0, right? So this term is negligible. h is very, very small as compared to 1. Let's say it's 0 0.001, right? So this term becomes negligible. So there, instantaneous rate of change is equal to minus 9.8t plus 23. So that is what we get from here, okay? Now, the question is, we want a point where instantaneous rate of change is zero. So let's equate this to zero. So we have zero equals to, so now I'll write minus 9.8t and I'm neglecting this term since h is very, very small, right? So I'm writing just plus 23 here. Correct? And now, let me just push it a bit calculate t from here. So we'll take 9.8 this side. So we say 9.8 t equals to 23, right? And from here, this implies t is equals to 23 divided by 9.8. So we have 23 divided by 9.8 equals to 2.3469. So I can write 2.347. Well, I could write, round it to one decimal place, right? But I'm not doing it because this value is right there. So I'll just add 0 0.5 to it, which is the next part, right? So we got zero slope at this point. So this point will definitely give us a turning point, And this turning point happens to be a maximum. Why is it a maximum? Because you see the equation has got negative here. That means that the parabola should be going like this, right? And so we have a maximum here, correct? Now, it says, what is the speed of the ball 0.5 seconds after it reaches the maximum? So 0.5 seconds we'll add to this. So we'll add plus 0.5 and we get our time, right? Okay, so it is 2.847, correct? Now at that time, what is the speed? So speed, we have a general formula for our speed, right? The general formula for the speed is this, correct? So we'll plug in, we'll say rate of change at t equals to 2.847, right? Is equals to, we'll plug two, this here, right? Minus 9.8 times 2.847 plus 23, correct? And then we will do it, right? So I'll multiply this by 0.98 and make it negative and then take away 23 from it. So I get my answer which is, let me do it again, 
2.9 okay so we'll do 23 we'll do like this we'll do 23 minus minus 9.8 times 2.847 and we get some number which is minus 4.9 so this give, gives us minus 4.9 and since the height is in meters and time is in seconds, so speed is so many meters per second, correct? So that's how we get it. I hope you understand. Let's go through it once again, okay? So the first part was that we did a general solution for the tangent using difference quotient method. Ft plus h minus Ft divided by h, where h is a point which is very very close to our expected time t okay so we say h is like very very less than one so it feels like point zero zero one one thousand of one is good enough now we plug in this value here expand it and simplify and as i told you always take a note of this kind of simplification and then we got the rate of change is minus nine point eight times t minus, we neglected this term with h because h is very small, plus 23, right? So in general, we got here, let me write this very clearly here. So we got our slope, or I should use rate of change as minus 9.8t plus 23. This is what we got, which is here. Now, then to maximum will be there at a point where the tangent has zero slope right instantaneous rate of change is zero so we equated this to zero and calculated t so t came out to be 2.35 to this we added 0.5 seconds because we are interested in finding speed after 0.5 seconds so it became so it is t plus 2 0.5 right so we did t plus 0 0.5 and we came up with t equals to 2.847 and rate of change at this time was calculated by plugging in the value 2.847 into our derived equation right and so we got speed as minus 4.9 meters per second so after immediately after we see that the ball is going downwards right so of course it is a maximum so that means it went up first and maximum so wherever at the turning point if instantaneous rate of change is positive and changes to negative then we have a maximum correct so there it is okay have a good look try to understand it's a very good question and then move on to question number 11 thank you